Hi, my name is Dennis, and I'm with my wise guys. Leave it up to us. I'm going to show you on how to quickly install the CentOS 5.6. Um, you're going to get this screen here, and you just press enter to go ahead and continue on. So it's a 7 CD series typically, and uh, so you'll insert CD1 into your drive and boot off that CD. You'll get that screen we just saw, and, um, and it's going to go through this process here. And I'm going to go ahead and click tab. Hit the tab key once to skip. This is actually just checks the media to make sure it's actually solid. I'm just going to skip that test. So I tab to skip and I press enter. And here we're presented with only really one option, which is to click on next. I'm going to select the English language, US English for a keyboard. And it says, would you like to initialize this drive erasing all data? I'm fine with that. I'm going to use this virtual machine for that purpose. And it says remove links, partitions, on selected drives, and create default layout. That's fine. You can also, if you click on the down arrow, you can see that there's other options. Um, I'm just going to go with their default. I always feel it's the safest. Are you sure you want to erase all the data? Yes, I am. I'm going to leave DHCP right now. When you're doing a server, you really should have a static address. But while I'm setting everything up, I'm going to leave it DHCP. I'm changing the time zone to my time zone, which is Detroit and click next and you want to type in a root password that you will not forget but it also will be um, somewhat complicated for people to guess it's the all-powerful password and desktop gnome is the only thing I'm gonna leave checked here I don't want to check anything else we're gonna install everything manually and then here you notice it says a complete log of the installation can be found in the file root install.log. So I'm going to click on next and it's going to show me all the CDs that are required to install based off my selections. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. So CD 5 and 6 will not be needed. Make sure you click continue and it will now install the system. So for the moment I'm going to go ahead and pause because this will take a few minutes and um, I'll come back as soon as it's done. Uh, installing. Okay, after installation, it said you'll be prompted with this screen. It says congratulations. On the bottom right hand corner, you'll find a reboot. Just go ahead and select that, and it will reboot your system and present you with the stage two of the setup. All right, after a reboot, it's going to bring you to this welcome screen. Click on the bottom right corner where it says forward. Here, then a firewall will be enabled which is the safest bet and there's only three things you need checked for this setup that we're doing which is SSH, Secure HTTPS, and WWHTTP. Those are the three ports that we need to open so we'll click on forward say are you sure you want to do this? Yes we are sure. SE Linux settings we're actually going to say permissive and we're going to click on forward. The date and time if you need to change that I'll leave the defaults now we create a username. Now this is your username you're going to log in with. And I am going to create that. Enter a password. Not the same as the root password you set up before, but uh, a standard password. And sound card setup. Additional CDs if you have any. I'm going to click on finish. Now it's going to ask me to log in with that username I just created. And now that I'm logged in, you're going to see in the top right hand corner, it's going to pop up with a view system updates. Because um, just like any operating system, when you first install it, there's been updates that's happened uh, right there. See, 132 packages. So we're going to click on view updates. Now that root password, not your user password, but the root password, go ahead and enter that one. And click apply updates. Now this is going to take a while. It could take all the way up to like 20 minutes possibly, depending on your internet connection. So um, the next thing it's going to ask for is an import key. Okay, as you see here, the uh, import key is popped up as I mentioned. So we'll go ahead and click import key and it will um, go ahead and begin updating the software. And we will wait for a software update complete message, which will be the next message we're looking for. Okay, it's come up with the software update successfully completed. We'll go ahead and click OK and then reboot now.
Okay, uh, it's rebooted. Now we're going to log in with that username we created and the password that we set. Okay, let's take care of a few maintenance items that we should do. We're going to click Applications, Accessories, and then go into Terminal. I'm going to type SU and then the password for the root. So now we're root. And then I'm going to go ahead and do an RM-F ETC local time. And this is actually uh, so people don't know what time zone you're in. So they can't tell when you're up working on your site. <clears throat> So I'm setting it to UTC, and we double check to make sure that it worked by clicking date, and you'll see UTC in the date. You don't have to do that, but uh, <clears throat> it's something that I advise. It's smart to do. Now we can reboot now, which will <clears throat> sync your daemons. It will sync your daemons with your new time zone. Um, but we can actually get a couple more things done right now. Um, Let's go ahead and just double check to make sure. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and install this package. Install yum priorities. Okay, that's installed. And uh, we're going to go to, so you don't have to remember all this. It's actually on my website, mywiseguys.com. And you go under forums, go down to technical or technology in CentOS, and it's the part one. Oh, we're on step 54. So let's go ahead and download. This is this here, so I'll do control C. Go here, we're going to do an edit paste. Okay, we got another one to pull down. See, go over here, do an edit paste. All right. Now the next step is to <clears throat> do a install of HTTP or the Apache, which I believe is already installed by default. Well, let's check anyways. The dash Y just means yes. So it normally prompts are you sure and you'd have to type a Y if you didn't do the dash Y and it says ain't nothing to do because Apache's already installed on it installed and at the latest version so we don't need to install that so the next step is that we will want to install SQL so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this paste And now it's going to go ahead and install. It says, are you sure? Because I didn't do the dash Y. I'm going to yes. Okay, the MySQL installation is completed. So let's do the next line here. And you're going to see, <clears throat> see an error message. But I am going to... And what this is doing is actually saying, hey, we want to make sure that MySQL starts every time the server is rebooted by default. So watch when I do this, it's going to say, hey, you can't find it. So let's just type in where is check config. It's going to say, hey, it's under sbin. So we're going to type sbin check config levels 235 my sql d. Okay, so that actually was successful. So let's go on to the next one and just say, hey, we need to start it now. So let's come over here. It's easier to type it, but I'm pasting for I don't know what reason. And see, it says, hey, it started it successfully. And you can go through netstat and validate that it actually started by typing netstat. Tap. And then you can actually see what started. And up here you'll see MySQL is actually a service that has started. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set a SQL password. It's kind of like a root password for your system, but it's actually for uh, MySQL. So I'm going to just 
give it a generic password of uh, root SQL. Now nah, it'll confuse you all. So I'm going to say good for today. That's my root SQL password. Remove PHP, PHP, anything PHP I want removed. It's going to say, hey, you know what? It's not loaded. I'm like, all right, great. So now I'm going to copy this because it is monstrously long. And this is going to install the latest 5.3 version, at least at the time of this tutorial. Paste. And now it's going to go ahead and install PHP 5.3. Okay, now that PHP is installed, let's go to the next thing. We know that check config won't work unless I type sbin in front of it. And HTTPD on. This will actually turn on Apache each time it reboots. Go ahead and start HTTP. D, HTTPD, start. Okay, it has started. So that means Apache is working and work on getting IN cube loaded. We'll test all of this at the end, but right now I just want to get everything installed as quickly as I can while this video is limited on time. So now that's downloaded, now let's go to the next step. Now we're going to basically unzip it by copying this command, coming over here and doing an edit paste. Okay, it's now on paste. So now that says, hey, go to the directory you just created, CDIN cube. Okay, I'm in there. Hey, let's first make a directory under user local and cube. And then we're going to go ahead and copy star everything that's in this directory right now I'm in to this new directory I just created. Oops, it would help if I did a slash. Okay, it is now copied all the files over. It says that we need to edit the PHP file, so let's do that. You can use whatever you want to for an editor. There's VI and uh, Nano or whatever, so I uh, like this editor. And um, it seems to be pretty easy to use. So I'm going to do a control V till I get to the very end of the file. And I'm going to come over here and just copy this and paste it. I'm sorry, control X and say yes, I do want to save it. Alright, and now we'll go ahead and restart HTTP. Restart. And now that will load the PHP INI file. Now you can go to the tester or I have actually downloaded it. Or I should say include it in this, so we just come down to the bottom here. So now I want to copy from, let me get into my home directory again, home, this, there's the file, so I want to copy SEF advanced tester.php, copy that to our var www.html. Alright, so now when I come over here, and I type in localhost that file name cf advance tester.php I see that ion cube loader is loaded it's green server software is green so Apache 223 is working and I'm running PHP version 536 so we're good to go we're ready to rock and roll so let's go ahead and download we're right now we're at number 79 so let me do this this is actually getting webmin installed this is the last step we need to do before um, we start customizing adding a website do an edit paste enter so it's now installing webmin we're going to get rid of this part just leave localhost and we're going to do colon 10,000. Enter. There it is. Webmin is up. Let me log in with root and your root password. And guess what? Now I'm logged into Webmin.